Does a person really need ice for your cooler when the ice doesn't melt anyway? Here she comes. Becky loves hopping into a cold pickup in the morning. Are you gonna scrape my windows? No. It smells, no. smells like buffalo you know poop what's in funny? here. I am so short, I can't even. It's impossible. I would need a ladder to scrape your windows. That is such a convenient excuse. Where are we at, Becky? I'm going to a bison farm. Say what? A bison farm. A bison, not buffalo. Bison. Bison. Well, they called them buffalo yesterday. But apparently they're not actually buffalo. Buffalo live in Africa. According to Google. Hey dog. Morning Scott. Morning. I got you on video already. Awesome. I didn't want to give you a warning. Oh, that's good. Uh, what's <laughs> going on today? Well, you tell me. Well, we are going to go move a couple bunches of bison and then we're gonna feed this group down here. They just got weaned just a week ago. And then we are uh, gonna go out, check out the herd bulls, maybe give them a little bit of protein cubes, just a little hitter, we call it, little, little, uh, it's got a micronutrient package in it. So that's what we got going on today. So this is Scott Osman, and we are, what? I mean, what town are you in here? We are near Mission, South Dakota. Uh, this area is called Hidden Timber. Um, it's right in the middle of the Rosebud Sioux Indian Reservation. South Central, South, South Dakota, Central, right? South Central, South Dakota, yeah. We're okay. south of the capital, about 100 miles. Um, uh, we. We've been farming and ranching here. I'm the fourth generation. My great great grandpa, it'd be, yeah, my great grandpa, he came here from the Omaha area originally, settled near Winter in the next county over near Trip County. And then uh, my grandpa got sent out here when he was in high school, but in the you know 40s. We had a range unit up here on the reservation, and we started ranching here. We've been ranching here ever since. So. Awesome. And we spent some time out here yesterday and got to see the bison, yep. do some fun stuff. Yeah. Maybe was, drove around with some rifles a little bit. Yeah, we might have done a little bit of that. Yes. Now we're going to go do some work today. So we're going to take you guys along with us and see what goes on in a bison farm. Yes. up the road and they'll be grazing winter wheat and third cutting alfalfa and some prairie prairie grass and they will be fed in the course. So they'll, they'll pretty much be just grazing cover crops, winter wheat, all that stuff until probably about February then we'll have to start feeding them hay again. Look at they got they got frost on them on the bison. Morning ladies. These are all bred uh, bred mother cows these are from uh, two-year-old bred heifers, all the way up to five-year-old cows, which is young. Um, most of our animals are pretty young yet. Uh, we, we got in, bought our first animals in the fall of 17. Or no, it would have been the fall of 16 and they got here at 17. And right now, we're feeding them protein pellets? Yes, what, what exactly just, are you giving them? It, we're just giving them, it's just a, it's just a protein pellet. It's got a little bit of protein in it. Nu nutrient package with a bunch of chelated minerals in it. Just supplementing their diets a yeah, little bit. Just supplement. Well, it's actually more of just a treat, really. I mean, that one's hungry. Usually, when they move to a new pasture, they get it so that way they want to move to the next pasture. Sure. So, the goal is to keep them moving to mimic their natural movement. They always, they you want always the herd to constantly ago. be moving. Yep. So, these girls up here. This is about, oh, 16, 1700 acres of grass, and they're moving mostly in quarters. Um, so they're in pastures about 160 acres, and they're moving about every eight to 10 days, you know, so around that area. So we're just giving them a little bit. They're only getting about a pound and a half, and you're just something to remind them to uh, always follow us to the next pasture. All good, she made it. Thanks for not losing my GoPro, Scott. Scott, I see a lot of open land, but I'm not seeing any bison yet. There's hopefully 180 pairs out here somewhere of uh, bison. 180 bison pairs. Yes. Hopefully now, they didn't run away. Yeah. Yesterday I heard you call them buffalo a few times. Yes. Is that acceptable? How do I put it? Like, we like to call them buffalo and that's like when people think the West, an American buffalo, they buffalo. Um, but 
the scientific term is bison and we're trying to use that more we're trying to use that term more because it's kind of a long story but the water buffalo guys are labeling their stuff as buffalo so they're labeling as american buffalo and it's not that big a deal but we're trying to stick with the bison so it's to decipher between the two yes because it's such a smaller so people number of animals. farm water buffalo also oh, yeah. big wade there's way more water in the u.s bison. not in the u.s in the u.s but in the world but there is in the u.s too huh, huh. There they are. I would say we're up on a hill here. Oh yeah, they're, they're just six just, miles that way, so. It's right over the We'll hill, take right? off and bounce through this pasture and Let's see if we it. can wreck this super duty. <laughs> Becky, are you gonna throw up yet? Getting up in my grill over Becky here, gets I car think. sick going down the interstate. <laughs> Good thing we're in the front seat. <laughs> Good no, thing. yeah, that's the key. See, for those who follow me on Instagram, we constantly make fun of people who wear vests. Tucker, are you cold? <laughs> He's definitely cold. He wishes he had a coat. Do you want to go way around them, and then we'll we'll head right at them, and was they're of course the furthest possible way away from the gate. But we'll see if they want to follow today. So much faster than I expected. I thought we'd be piddling across this mile long pasture all day long. Is it just because they like the, the stuff you're dropping or? Well, they know they're gonna get moved to a fresh pasture. You know, they want they, that too. When they see this rig, they know they're gonna, they're getting fresh grass. Sure. And then they just, they get excited, like especially on a cool morning here, they just, they wanna run. And you know, they don't, they could run for 20 miles like this. You know, they're so athletic. Sure. And yeah, they're just, they're fired up. They know they're, Getting some fresh grass. Um, we generally only give them, you know, the cake when we move them to a, a fresh pasture. It's just it's a little something, just so that they they treat. Yeah, it's yeah. just a little treat. You know, it's just yep. Just like uh, you and Doritos or whatever. <laughs> I do but run for pair, Doritos. Pair with your Love bison Doritos. Flares, you know. What did you just say, Beck? The poop from the buffalo is smaller than I thought it would. That's a small bison poop. There's some big ones. Here they come. Look out, Scott. There's a bunch of bison behind you. Oh, <laughs> they thought I told them to look out. They stopped instantly. Look at the steam. Fresh pasture, ladies. Just awesome. <laughs> Made it through. So how many herds will you do this with today? Uh, we're just moving these two herds today because that's just the scheduled moving time. Yep. So we move, like on this unit, we'll move anywhere from every two weeks to three weeks on this herd. That herd that we just moved, we're in the process of getting a cross fence program. It's only four pastures right now. We're gonna turn it into like eight or nine pastures. We're in the process of working with the NRCS, help us with cross fencing and water development. Because what your goal is, you want more animals on less area for a smaller amount of time. People, it's hard for, it doesn't, when you first hear it, it doesn't really make sense. You want more animals on a smaller area, but it's just for that shorter period of time. So Because will, you want to keep them moving, right? Yeah, you want to keep them moving. You, know, you want to get in the pasture, uh, you know, smash down, eat it, and then move on to the next one. That's so, we. These are bigger pastures, so they're moving every you know two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. 
Um, but over there, after we get that project done, there'll be equal pastures of like half sections, two quarters. And so they'll be moving every like 10 days or 10 days or two weeks. They'll be moving pasture, pasture, pasture. Okay. So we do that with all the herds. Up the house, it's a little bit more intense because everything's just in quarters and like 100 acres. Those ones are getting moved every eight days up to the home place. Okay. So um, the far herd, our big herd over there, the 275 pairs, they're getting moved. Um, they have oh, like six pastures. They're getting moved every three to four weeks. So okay. as time goes on, we're just going to keep cross fencing, keep fencing out more farm ground to graze cover crops, develop water. Um, we're just going to keep on, keep on mimicking the natural movement of how they moved, you know, for thousands of years. So that's right. the goal. So they're slowly walking this way. Is that because they heard us coming through the gate? Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, I, they heard us coming down the road. They can, they can tell. They know. What they they're is. smart. Heads up. Coming through. Excuse me. They come quick. That's what she said. So I'm told this one on the front here. That's Doris. Doris has got her own personality. She's. She's the boss bison. What's up? Doris is the boss bison. Doris is the boss cow of this herd. The boss cow. She is there always a, a like a boss cow? Oh, there is usually, but she's definitely like very, definitely the boss cow. Of this herd. Feeling good. She's taking off into Here. overdrive. This is Doris. Oh, there's Doris. So out in the middle of the pastures here, they got a lot of solar powered water water troughs. Yeah, water tank, the 30 foot bottomless tank. This is kind of the standard for this area, these 30 foot bottomless tanks. There's a bent night in the bottom and then we put these up just to try to keep them from getting in the tank. Um, it seems like it seems like it almost makes them want to get in the tank more because there's something there to rub on, but sure. we have some tanks that don't have any protection and we don't have any issues and we have tanks that have these protection but yeah it's just a two panels and that runs down to a submersible pump um we have a real high water table here we drill our wells to 100 but they're are you water. on top of the aquifer here yeah ogallala aquifer we're on the northern tip of it we have all kinds of very high quality water it's not very deep so i think our this well is 100 but we're probably hitting water at 50 right here okay and it's just got an overflow and it overflows in into our runoff dam and we like having that so that way there's never water pressure yeah, or water pressure issues with the so the whole herd can come up here and everybody gets a drink nobody and they, and in the problem. summer they can go in the water and cool down if they want yeah they, they go in the water a little bit and cool down um, is it so is it constant flow there's always just a trickle coming through there well it would be that would be shooting out if we had sun right now there's no oh yeah it, it runs it faster would, it would launch out but oh you know then we don't have a battery on you can put a battery on they can run all night too if you have a big battery set with it okay but no it just runs when there's good sunlight this is one of our better ones it run you know we have no sunlight right now and it's still running so yeah that's it's it's a good one but this is kind of our standard you, for this area do you have issues with freezing at all in the winter here um yes it definitely freezes but what we do in the winter time is we get the herds more in one area um so we we do have to feed our bison in the winter time we're not allowed to run on some of the tribal lands during the winter months so we'll feed in one area then we'll just focus on we'll just have one water source or more two so they'll they'll the pressure from them just drinking and we always put you know where it runs out we always just put where the water runs out you know shoots out right where they'll be drinking so they constantly keep it open and then during the day water comes on and it, the other water just thaws out so we don't have any power out here we don't have any heating but we do have to chop ice in the winter time which okay can get old so yeah also for my buddy Randy, take note, they wear a lot of vests out here. Yeah, you gotta have vests. This is kind of standard operator procedure, Carhartt vest, because you put on a big coat, you jump in the tractor, 
then you're hot, and then you jump out, and you're fencing. Why don't you just have the heat off in the tractor all the time, then you never have to bother with it like we do? Well, you get claustrophobic, you're kind of like John Candy, you know, and trying to get <laughs> stuck in there and trying to get out, you know, so you don't want that. There's but your you John Candy reference coat. of the day. You do have to have a coat if you're gonna jump on a four-wheeler chase buffalo. That's, it can get a little cold. Yeah, see, so then what are you gonna do? You gotta you go back and get a coat. You just have seat, you know, and shake the dust Just off put the door. coat on. Yeah. Scott, how many active gates do you have on this farm? Active gates? Uh, yeah, there's 272 active gates we use on this place. That's what I was going to guess. Exactly. That's, that's kind of standard. Now what are we doing, Scott? So, we uh, we made these salt feeders. That's the only thing the bison get is they get a little bit of cake, usually when we move them. Um, and then they, we, they have access to Redmond salt all year round. It's the same stuff that you have in your salt shaker at home. Um, full of micronutrients, but micros and minerals micros and minerals and then this These feeders are about the only thing that we've come up with that the buffalo will not destroy Otherwise, they just destroy everything else. So yeah, this is two and seven eighths wall pipe with some uh, Just square tubing and then this is old conveyor belting that we just sell. Oh, okay on. conveyor belting from gravel. Farmer engineering yeah. Got out your Leatherman. I go for the side. Karate chop. Yep. Putting all three of them in here? No, just two. Just two. Looks like Lowry's. Try some on your burger. There's a windmill, Becky. That's the old school way of solar powering your water hose. Half windmills and half solar power. So whenever these break down or go bad, then we drop some more solar power. So. Tell me what we're looking at here. So these were put in by surveyors. Would have been I don't know the exact year. It'd been late 1800s. I think it was late 1800s, early 1900s. Surveyors came around and plotted out all of the quarters. So this is a quarter mark, and it's got. So it's a property line marking. Yep, property line marketing. And see, it says Indian allotment on, because this would have been all reservation ground when yeah. this was put in. So it's got the the number on it, which, which quarter it is, because every quarter has numbers. So, so this is the corner. Yeah, we're in section, we're in the corner of section 26. Like 26 is out here, 27, 28. And this one would be, I don't know, what, I can't read that. So this is a quarter or this would be a section marker yeah a quarter but then it shows the quarter that's the sections that come off of it sure and so yeah i think this would have been most of these got pulled out because guys were running into them with their pickups and taking out their transmission but there's still a few left out here. you just got to watch out for them but what year do you think that was put in it would have been late 1800s late 1800s yeah, so that's been there a while that's been there a while and it's been hit a few times it's supposed to be straight up in the air and they go they're about six foot in the ground and they're splayed out on the bottom so it's hard to pull out so. sure what are all the treats laying on the ground What's that? what are all the treats laying on the ground yeah oh yeah cow chips homemade buffalo pies chips yeah buffalo chips you got plenty of those if you need them i'm i mean I, no i don't need any <laughs> All of our farm ground will be fenced within the next three to five years. Right now, we're, we're just in the process of it. Um, but yeah, this is all organic. We've been farming organically since 1997. And, and we've done some uh, crop grazing, you know, with our beef cows in the past. But now we have the bison. We're, we're doing some of that with the bison too. But we want to, in the next three to five years, have all of our acres be, you know, intermixed with the grazing and the organic farming together. So you planted this after you harvested something here? Yep, we harvested off, uh, what did we have here? I think we had spring wheat here. We harvested it off and we come in and we planted winter wheat and it's, usually it's a lot better, but it hasn't. It, like since the end of July, we haven't hardly got any rain. No so I rain. can't believe it's as green as it is. But, so we'll, we'll graze this in the spring, bring the buffalo in, graze it down. And then we'll probably come in here after we graze it down with corn. That's probably what we'll do. Okay. And then how long will you graze this for? It'll be quick. Like we'll we'll lock the herd in here and they'll be in here for just like a few days. Come in and mow it down yeah, and get it'll, out. It'll be and you know, if 
we might run a little electric fence too and have them graze this half for a couple days and that half for a couple days but that's our water source right over there we have a tire tank that's on a well over there but so we have this we'll do that the same with that that uh chunk of ground over there so these are your studs right here yeah, look at that guy he's, he's itching himself best genetics this 930 bull here he was the dakota territory vice association uh, young guns challenge he was the, the champ he was uh, eighteen thousand dollars Woo! this bull right here that is that is Miller Time. 934 is named Miller Time. He's right you got there. a bull named Miller Time? Yes. No, oh, yeah. 930. How much you need for him? <laughs> How much we need? Uh, he, he's about 13 grand. 13 grand? Yeah, for him. I'll just let you hang on to him. All right, we'll keep him. So that's Miller Time. He was uh, for the territory. Not now Miller Time. That's rude. He was the third place champ. 140 here. He was the yearling champ. He's that's, in the back here. Yep, that's Jocko. That's Jocko? Yeah. That's I know who he's named name. after. Yeah. And uh, he was the Denver yearling champion last year. So these are your bulls. The, this is this is your uh, this is your stud pool here. Yeah, these are so, your genetics you're bringing in, yeah, right? So what we did is we sorted off all of our best heifers and cows, and we sorted off our best bulls, and we'll keep most of these back as breeding stock for the rest of the herd. Okay. Um, so they just run on this place. It's about. The, the home place here is about the perfect size for running a genetics herd, you know, there's about 150 females up here. Um, and so we put these best bulls on to get the best heifers and the best bulls out of them to uh, genetics wise. So, you know, we're looking for, like him, we're looking for the depth, the width, oh yeah, he's feeling good, you know, and size, how they gain on grass. We keep track of all that information. Um, and uh, S same attitude. as looking for a, a good stud on good, in the cattle, Angus, right? Yeah. So we were registered Angus breeders um, up until 2010, so we kind of brought that into the bison. We want the best of the best. Yep. And the high quality genetics directly correlates to high quality meat. It just it is the not not all buffalo are created equal, and so we we, we just strive for the best. So and that's cease. That, that bull right there with Cease on his tag. He was the 2019 Denver champion. Is he's he four. He one. He looks huge. Yeah, he's our he's our big boy. He weighed after breeding season. They get pretty run down during breeding season. They run pretty hard. He weighed 1974 last week. 1974. Yeah. So they just finished breeding season. Yep. They're well. They they were done breeding season back in you know August or okay. you know earlier July. They did most of their breeding. So you mix them in with the ladies over the summer. Yeah, they get these. They naturally separate, but we just separate these because we just that way we can keep them out here. You know, they're not. You know, they don't really mess with the cows, but they're not off causing trouble in the cow herd. So they just stay. We they naturally separate when they're done breeding, so we just lock them in. You know, and they run in these three pastures here, just kind of okay. all winter, just hanging out, being dudes. How close did the bison come to being extinct? Do you know so, that? So no one really knows for sure, but. The, the best estimate is there was down to like 700 to 1,000 total animals in the world. In the world. Point. Now it, do they live somewhere else or just North America? No, just North America. Okay. I mean, some people took them. There's the, uh, our partners, our partner's family in Dakota Pier of the Himes, they're, they were involved in taking the first bison to, uh, to Hawaii. So there's some bison on an island in Hawaii. And they they were, needed a vacation. families involved. See, but yeah, so they got down to 700 to 1,000 animals and uh, it's grown from that. That would have been in like the 20s. So the genetic pool got so small that there's there's not as many higher quality animals as there is lower quality, you know. And most sure. of them, you know, it, where it doesn't really matter, you know, they're running on state parks and stuff. But yeah, it got down it was close so yeah instead of them being all gone so but then just through you know the the best way to save a species is start eating it you know so <laughs> sure that's and through market-based conservation um and the state parks and everything brought the brought the numbers back i think there's about a half a million bison in north america now you guys ranching oh yeah ranching hard uh, so this is my wife kate and my one-year-old son ted he's Hi, waving Dad. So like for Dakota Pier, uh, Kate, if you message Dakota Pier or 
whatever. Any order you put in, it goes through Kate. So she's the one who takes your orders. And usually Ted's on her lap. <laughs> so he's taking orders too. Yeah, Ted is taking yeah. orders. And uh, general ranch boss, you know, he, he does cake and stuff like that. Is he driving now? He always drives. I feel a lot he's safer been, now. He's been driving since he was a baby. <laughs> It's a long time ago. Now, now we're talking. Now I no, that's your seat. Oh, what that's are you yours. About? <laughs> you said you haven't done this in quite a while. Yeah. I'll make sure I get it on yeah. on camera when here. That way the it. world can see it. Yeah. That was pretty good. Still got it. Still got it. Grab one, put it in, then you back into the other one. So now you spear the second one? Yep, spear the second one. And it'll carry it on the back? Yep, we carry it along with us. Oh, there we go. Now we uh, put up about, oh, oh, seven or 8,000 of these round bales a year. Um, most of it gets sold because, uh, you know, now that we don't have beef cows anymore, the bison don't eat near as much and we don't feed them for very long. They only get fed for maybe two or three months out of the year. Uh, why don't they eat as much? Because they're on more pasture? No, they're just more efficient. Um, their their uh, immune, not immune system, what's the word I'm looking for? Metabolism slows down in the wintertime. Really? So yeah, they'll only eat about 20 pounds of hay where an old beef cow, she'll eat, you know, she can eat up to 40. You know, or so so even though they're bigger animals, they're not burning as many calories. Well, the bulls are bigger. The cows are smaller than beef cows. Oh, that's so, interesting. Like I didn't a, know that. You know, it depends on. Yeah, they're all different, but you know, our cows definitely weigh a thousand to oh a thousand to eleven hundred fifty, maybe twelve hundred. Um, where our old beef cows, our black Angus beef cows, they were they weigh you know fourteen hundred and up. You know. So. Sure. I'll never get over that view here, the way you can just see for, how far away are those those hills? Those ones are, they're three and a half, four. Those ones over there are more like five or six. That's a hell of a view. It's like magic. We have an automatic net wrap taker offer. Works an automatic well. net wrap taker it's offer. It's called Tucker. It's a Tucker. Yeah takes that off his back end because we don't want to spread any plastic out here right put that on and this is a second cutting grass and alfalfa bale pick her up and it's just a bale unroll is all it is oh look at that it doesn't really process it it just unrolls it spreads it out yep why spread it out so much why not just let them kick the bale apart well the the animal buffalo are extremely social and they have a pecking order so we like to get it spread around so that the boss cows don't you know beat up on the cows and aren't as aggressive okay so that's really, kind of what i assume yep and then we also want to everywhere where we want you know to increase organic matter like here this is a place where we used to feed beef animals and now we're just grazing animals on it yeah like we graze the grass i like to spread it on these spots just to increase that organic matter sure it's not getting just so the lunchroom's busy. Lunch Everybody's busy eating. Out here. Do you guys want to explain what Dakota Pure is and how you market these things? So Dakota Pure Bison is our family, the Osmonds, at Antelope Creek Bison. So it's me and Kate and Ted and my uh, <laughs> mom and my dad, Mike and Darla. And that's the Heim family, which they've owned bison. Their family's owned bison since 1967. So, so they've been doing this a long they've time. Been, they've been in the bison industry a long time. They were very helpful when we first got in the industry. Yeah, they I bet. They us a lot of tips. And so we were just talking with them. Oh, yeah, come here. We were just talking with them. We just, uh, we have about 900 females and they have about eight or 900 females. And we're running, you know, some of the better animals on some of the best grass in the world. And we just didn't, we didn't see why people everywhere couldn't enjoy bison meat. Um, well, you know, we, we have the animals and so our whole goal was just to start being able to produce, we, we already have the animals to get meat to everybody shipped directly to their door. So the highest quality meat you can get. Um, and so we got to talking with them. So we decided to launch 
Dakota Pure. Um, so we we take both of our family's animals and we uh, have them processed and boxed and shipped directly to everywhere in the lower 48 states. You sent and, me a box. Yes. And I ate it. Yeah, right. with yeah. Doritos. Yeah. With Doritos, yes. And so our whole goal was, our Dakota Pierce goal is to use these <laughs> regenerative, <laughs> regenerative, regenerative grazing practices um, to produce high quality meat and use, do that using as many American hands as possible. We just don't understand why people are eating meat and beef, bison, everything that's not from the United States. Sure. So, and do that while using as many American hands as possible, getting America back to work. That's that's just our whole goal. Um, so we teamed up with them and we learned how to create a website. I learned how to create boxes, which is a lot harder. How to than create I, boxes? Yeah. Are like, you whittling them yourself? No, I did not whittle them <laughs> myself. But what size to use? Uh, all that and all that stuff. Um, we ship. You know, we have four different size boxes, all insulated, dry, ship frozen. Um, free shipping. Free shipping. Free sh yeah. So where where does somebody go to try to? get some of this you can it's linked to our instagram but it's dakotapurebison.com and then we have uh sweatshirts and hats all made in the usa or we try to we try to keep everything made in the usa as much as possible we will link that down below as you said it's dakotapurebison.com dakotapurebison.com there you go okay bye ladies thank you enjoy your lunch <laughs> Is this a custom mirror, Scott? That we actually did that ourselves. All on your own? Yeah, we did. Did you have to YouTube shot. that, or you just knew? No, we. Like, how that's to do just that. that's been handed down through the generations. That's know, impressive. Electrical tape. You know.